two, one. Hi guys and welcome. Uh, good to be live again after a break last week when Tim wasn't here and I wanted a break. Um, <laughs> hi Tim. Hey, how you doing? Not bad, mate. Not bad. How are you? Uh, yeah, having fun and games, uh, fighting with um, affiliate platforms and various <laughs> various other software providers who I may or may not bitch about them in the next 25 minutes. Yeah, I was actually I was going to start with, hi, Tim, having a good day? <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> this week has been particularly, uh, um, yeah, not, not so much fun, let's put it that way. Never in mind. Moment. It's all about growing up and being English. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've been particularly English about it today. Um, <laughs> uh, dear, for, you know, I, I actually sent Mark a copy of the email I sent to one particular company um, that, uh, yeah, had a particularly crappy uh, um, uh, method for uh, maintaining recurring, you know, your recurring billing with them in that you, it's a rolling 12 month contract and you need to give three months notice of cancellation and they don't send you a reminder or anything like that. And the company is called Trusted Shops, not particularly trustworthy. Don't trust Trusted Shops. No, no, definitely not. There you go, fun and games. We shouldn't mention, we shouldn't, shouldn't say anything about them. No, I, I, I won't mention any name. <laughs> right, anyway, today, look, now we've got some people in there. Hi guys, welcome. Uh, today we are talking about, okay, we called it how to survive your first six months. Okay, but it's not necessarily your first six months. Let's just say it's how to survive the first six months of your new business or your first six months of just working on your business and getting it going, no matter what state it's in now. Okay, so the title is a little bit misguided or misleading, but we couldn't fit it all in. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, right, come on, Tim, you start yeah, no, I was before we before we get started, I know a few people have contacted me uh, like individually asking me about the um, uh, all star e-commerce event I was at last week in uh, America. I did put a post up on to was it TLM or was it on to SMO? Uh, SMO? OK, um, what we'll do is I think, you know, once I've actually sort of got my head around a lot of the stuff that we were talking about and we, we were exposed to at that event, we'll probably do a call specifically about it because there's some really, really cool stuff that I uh, probably want to talk about. But on to today and yes. talking about um, what Mark has coined slow marketing, which I think is a oh. bit of a <laughs> – which, which is, it doesn't have the same punch and click and verve as some of the – other uh, marketing. See my marketing. <laughs> Um, marketing. <laughs> well, no, it's the antithesis, basically. And what we want to try and get across to people today uh, and to anybody listening to this later on is that um, when we start a new business or when we have a new idea, it's kind of like the, the biggest problem that we have as entrepreneurs is we bounce between ideas too much. We have lots of tools that we end up using and we kind of bounce between those and think that it's the next greatest thing. And a lot of what Mark's been posting about over the last two two weeks while I've been away, now that I've caught up, um, has been very much about the antithesis of that. It's all about the techniques and not the tools. It's about slowing down, concentrating on one thing and one thing only, and creating consistency with the actions that you take every single day to actually start getting some traction. And one of the examples that Mark came up with was to do with uh, YouTube videos and i think i think it was an example it was some of the youtube videos that you've been concentrating on for your own youtube channel over literally for just a couple of weeks you've been going you've you've had a bit of a, a method each day of going in and you know adjusting tags and you know yeah. you know and creating better descriptions and better titles optimizing each individual one of them it's not necessarily about creating new content or more content it's about just as much about optimizing and re-promoting the existing content you've already got and doing that on a consistent basis and you slowly start seeing more traction and I say slowly within a couple of weeks mark's seen some pretty decent upticks in the results i you know it's been really really quite impressive to see 
actually how little you actually need to do to actually get some traction with this. Just, kind of just consistency of action. Um, bonjour, Peter, by the way. Bonjour, ça va. Um, Samuel Jambon, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> Is he in Flemish? Yeah, he spoke. He said, look, he just he posted bonjour slackers. <laughs> he knows us too well. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, it's, it's all about consistency of action. Now, if I can try and contrast it, let's say three or four years ago, I get my Monday morning. I have a list of things to do. I'm going to build a landing page. I'm going to write a report. I'm going to um, do some videos. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And my head was just buzzing with things to do. Fast forward to this week, I got up Monday morning and said, right, I'm going to write an, e an article today, Tuesday morning, right, I'm going to do a video today, Wednesday morning, I'm going to do a video today, uh, yesterday, I'm going to write a report today. And that's it. There's, there's no, none of this doing this and this and doing that. It's just economy of effort. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, good joke, Alex. I'm not going to tell anyone what it was. <laughs> um, it's, just, it's just doing what you need to do to move your business on one notch. So the thing that Mark and I have both kind of agreed on with a lot of this, and you know, we've been trying to kind of create some – get to – get to grips essentially with what what this is all about and i say it's about the consistency of what you do and getting the basics right and i say coming back to that techniques not tools thing it's about creating regular content on a particular platform that may be facebook it may be youtube it may be a blog if you so wish to you know if it's a podcast and it's like the consistency of effort that you put in and the people that are doing it every single day you know five days a week even if you know or three days a week they're consistently doing uh one thing but they're doing it over a period of six months and it's like they may not see the traction within that first six months but you get to six month point and all of a sudden you start to start seeing the hockey stick happen because people are because people are starting to see that you're being consistent with your efforts um so you know certainly that's that, that's kind of what we're trying to get at here is like, you know, stop, tr tr stop jumping from one ne thing to the next. It has to be consistent action on a particular platform. Show up, be there every single day. I mean, it's pretty, let's go back to YouTube again. YouTube rewards minutes viewed. If you, as your minutes viewed grow, the amount of traffic they'll send you grows. Okay, so if you keep on posting, they're going to reward you. So what happens is if you, if you look at any, go to Social Blade and pick any channel, any good channel, or any channel that's getting a lot of traction now, you will see that they had three to six months, or zero to six months, not a lot happened. And then suddenly they start getting the uptick and the uptick and the uptick. The trouble is, most people give up after three months. It's the same with blogging. People give up their blog after three months because they haven't got any traction. Same with Facebook. They build a, they build a, a fan page, they start posting three months in, not, not a lot's happening, they give up. So one of, the, one of the examples that I can bring to you from a from actually from the conference I was at, I was actually fortunate enough to listen to the guy who is the marketing director for DrAxe.com. Now, if you've searched for anything online to do with anything to do with food, nutrition, health, exercise, blah 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 blah, in the last eighteen months, more than likely you will have seen a link to a Dr. Axe article or video or you know whatever and this guy that uh, was speaking was talking about when they first started and there was literally like three guys in the room there was like dr josh axe this marketing guy and one other business partner and it was you know they started creating a, their blog and creating content and they were consistently putting content up every single day they were creating a piece of content doing the SEO for it, and then promoting the hell out of it. That's all that they were doing, day in, day out, week in, week out, and they saw no traction. And it was literally like nothing happened for like six to 12 months. But then they started seeing the uptick. As the SEO, you know, Google started, you know, gracing them with some good search engine rankings. And, you know, some of their other promotional efforts were starting to see, see fruits. And they've basically gone from, literally from zero to like nine figures in the matter of three years but the first you know you look at the first six months the period that most people kind of give up is like they basically had no income whatsoever from that particular uh, from, from their efforts but now they're seeing the now they're seeing the benefits of it
So, you know, it pays to stick at something and be consistent with it over and over and over again. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole thing, it doesn't matter if you have got eight hours a day, 10 hours a day, one hour a day, three hours a week. It doesn't matter what you've got as long as you make the most use of that time. Uh, I, wrote, I was writing an email today. And when you left school, when you left college, did you think to yourself, do you know what? I'm going to look for a job that I really hate, that will really bore me. And you've got a weird degree. Uh, but, I mean, people look for jobs that they, they're going to be excited by and that they're going to look forward to going to. Now, it doesn't always work, off, work out like that, but initially that's what they think. Why online would you set up an online business doing something you hate doing, like writing emails or like writing blog posts? If you hate writing, don't do a bloody blog. There's no point whatsoever you'll give up. So find an angle that you like. Um, if you like going on Facebook, right, there you go. You like Facebook, go on Facebook. Um, people say, oh, I don't, know, I don't know how to write an ad. You look at 100 ads a day. Just know the ones you're looking at and copy those. And that, Okay, that's your ad. You can, you can build, take one of those, someone else's ad, and just build your whole business around another person's ad. You can take another person's Facebook post, and you can build your whole business around the ideas that they're using. You don't need to know how to do it to start with. You don't have to give up, oh, no, I'm terrible at this. Just look at what's around you. There's enough information out there that you can grab. I'm getting passionate now. Sorry. I'm going to start. <laughs> it's just that I, I get so fed up. So many times people say, to me, oh, yeah, but I can't write. I don't know how to write an ad. How many ads have you seen that day, that week, that year, that month? So for me, there's, I suppose that there's um, a couple of different platforms that you can uh, try to pursue. And like some work for people, some people and some don't work, you know, for, for them. And it's like, you're either going to be, you know, being a social media person, i.e. Facebooking and all that kind of jazz. You're either going to be a podcasty type person and creating podcasts, or you're going to be doing video stuff or email or, you know, blogging or whatever. Find one of those things that you actually enjoy doing. I hate videos. Mark goes on about videos all the time. I hate doing videos and I, I'm sat here on a fucking video with Mark Thompson and I, I hate doing videos, but it's like it, it, the, the, the challenge for me with videos is like, oh, it just seems like such a, you know, I can never get it right the first time. And if I'm recording it and I need to put it up on YouTube, something to do with, and I hate having my face in front of something for what we do for lean greens and blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, I hate doing them. So I just said, Sam, go and do them. You go and do them. If you want to, if you want to put videos up, Sam's going to do it. I'll do all the marketing bits behind it, but like, you know, I'll get somebody else to do that stuff for me. It's like, so I've, I've picked for myself the, the stuff that I like doing. I like writing emails. I like writing copy and I like doing advertising, you know, whether it's on Facebook or Google or whatever, those are the things that I concentrate on. Um, you know, and I, those are the things I do consistently day in, day out, and I'm quite happy to do. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and the, the other thing is you don't need all these tools. Honestly, you don't need to go and buy um, whatever tools they're advertising this week. Uh, oh, it's SamCart this week. I've had about 100 pro email promos for the basic <laughs> SamCart. You don't need it. Use a few, until you've got your business set up and established, don't, you don't need it. I just I bought uh, Thrivecar a year ago, or two years, 18 months ago. That's when I needed it. I didn't need it 13 years ago. PayPal link works perfectly well. Here's my PayPal link. Okay, here's my bank account details. Uh, it's, here's my local pub, drop in $10. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, I, you know, I started 10 years ago with PayPal. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those, and I, I didn't have a merchant account and a proper merchant account until about four years ago. And I, by that point, I've been online for well over seven years, six years. Yeah. So you don't need any of that stuff. It's like PayPal does for most people. So, I mean, I've, probably, so. I've probably taken, I haven't checked, but I've probably taken about seven figures in 10 years on PayPal. Um, I didn't need a car. You don't, you don't need it. It's like um, people said yesterday, you know, you can run adverts on Google or whatever. Facebook gives you as much space as you need to write a full page advertorial. So you don't need a blog, use Facebook. You don't, you, there's very little you need. If you can write, just write on Facebook. 
You don't need a membership site. Use a, use a, a Facebook group. Use whatever's at hand. It's not going to cost you money because every penny you spend on tools is another penny you have to earn before you break even. Um, so I thought we'd try and give some kind of like, okay, what, what do you do? What steps? You know, obviously we've kind of, you know, got enthusiastic about this sort of stuff and told people about, you know, <laughs> it's like concentrate on just one thing. Here's some actionable stuff, I think, and then that might help people um, sort of get the best out of this. It's like one, pick a platform. doesn't really matter what it is. Just pick one just and then start doing that thing consistently, whether it's YouTube, whether it's a blog, whether it's a podcast, whatever. Pick one and get moving with it. The next thing you need to do is, uh, and you'll, as, as you are doing that consistently, you will start naturally building a tribe anyway. And some platforms are um, natively have a, 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 a more set up to actually, actually build a tribe. Obviously, Facebook has um, quite a lot of that viral aspect to it. Podcasts, less so. YouTube, yes, there's some, you know, viral aspect to that as well, depending on what people are searching for. But Facebook tends to be where a lot of the viral action happens. If you're going to do a, pop, a blog, you're going to have to be pretty good at, you know, getting it SEO'd unless you're willing to spend some money at driving some traffic at it. So, you know, to get started, Facebook is a great place to get started to actually start building a following, a tribe of people who actually give a crap about your stuff. The next thing is, Basically, find something that you can sell to them. You know, what, what's the, what's, what solution can you find to their most pressing problem? You know, Pete talks about the pocket of people um, so often, um, you know, and it, it's true. It's like you find, you find your tribe, find your audience, your, your pocket of people who, who, are, who have a common, um, a common problem, a, a common demographic, common interest. And you find out what products and services that they're actually buying and selling, buying on a regular basis. So, you know, for example, for an on online marketer, if you're in the IM space and you're helping people with the make money online stuff, you know, there's tools, there's SaaS tools out there, things like Aweber, there's things like um, Lead Pages or ConvertKit or, you know, Active Campaign or, you know, ClickFunnels, and they all have affiliate programs. And a lot of these affiliate programs are have recurring uh, recurring commissions based upon how long somebody stays on their on on that account for. So, for example, for me, I've been you know ten years ago I started promoting Aweber, believe it or not, and I'm still collecting commission checks. You know, pretty much every month or every other month, I get a check through the post from Aweber, which is a pain because it's hey, dollars. What's and I to be, what's the check? <laughs> I know checks. Who does checks anymore? Um, but you know, you know, I've not, I've not promoted Aweber in Christ five years. I've not told anybody to sign up for Aweber for five years. It's just that people are still on there, and Aweber is still sending me checks, and I'll, I'll quite happily take them. Thank you very much. But it's the recurring commissions for me. The you know, jumping on to an affiliate product that you one totally believe in, and like you love using yourself. And you're quite happy to tell people about, you know, start telling people about it and put an affiliate link in there. Because those recurring commissions, whilst at the beginning they seem really small and really insignificant, over time they will grow and grow and grow. And today it's like, you know, on some down months when I've got a quiet month and I can't can't pay myself the salary or whatever, you know, I've still got that backup of those affiliate checks coming in or affiliate commissions going automatically into my bank account, um, you know, coming in. And it, it, it saves your ass from, from time to time, which is really quite nice. And other times it actually pays for your holidays. Yeah. I mean, the great thing about it is if, if it's something that you, you actually use all the time, you can go in and do videos about it. Um, I've got two, two free courses I give away, one on ConvertKit, one on Active Campaign. Each month they bring in, they bring in um, commissions. It's, and I only, what I'm doing is I go in there, video thing I'm doing, throw it up there or send it out or write, write a report about it or compare both. Uh, and it's, it's, it's not taking time out of my day and it's just bringing an income. Right. We have got some um, questions. So we've got some questions. Right. We've actually, got, we've actually got two quite similar. So the first one is a lot of talk about frozen PayPal accounts. Hold it with it there one second. And then Mary says, actual steps that won't attract Facebook and PayPal fans. <laughs> Um, 
Right, so, uh, Facebook, right. How not to get banned on Facebook? Don't be a dick. That's basically the, the line. Only advertise what they like you advertising. Don't make false claims. Uh, don't make, do anything you, you can't justify. Yes, they are complete idiots at times, and they will, they will cancel adverts, and they will uh, delete posts and whatever. But you can always get back to them. Uh, nine times out of ten, well, I've always got things back. Even the account I lost, I got back after a year. PayPal, what happens with PayPal, if you're putting in, let's say you get, you get paid $1,000 a month, and suddenly you do a promo and you get $100,000 in, then they'll freeze your account. But it's not actually freeze it. They just put a rolling, a three-month rolling thing on it. So um, in three months' time, you'll get, they'll keep back, I don't know, 30000 every three months just to deal with any potential um, chargebacks, etc. It's only protecting themselves, actually protecting you to a certain extent. If you contact them and say, look, I've got a big launch coming up. I expect to make X amount. Just letting you know, can you let me know if that's going to be okay without going to get my account frozen or I'll go to Stripe. They'll do it. They'll, they, they, they generally do it. So um, Facebook, for example, is a quite an interesting one. Facebook bans. Um, my primary business is in probably one of the most regulated and heavily um, restricted categories that you can possibly have outside of pornography online. And that's the nutritional supplement world. Now, what Facebook is interested in is basically covering their own asses. They don't want somebody coming back to Facebook and going, well, you had this advert on here claiming that they could, I could lose 25 pounds in 25 minutes. Um, you know, it's your fault that I haven't. And I've actually added, you know, 15 stone to my ankles. Um, you know, it's basic stuff with Facebook and and, and even PayPal and, or whatever, you know, whether it's your merchant account, whether it's Stripe, whether it's PayPal, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Google AdWords, all of these, all of these companies are a lot along the same lines. It's like, get the basics right. So every landing page that you have, every page on your website has things like privacy policy, contact us, terms of conditions, terms of service, uh, earnings disclaimer, um, results disclaimer, um, and basically, you know, you, you just be as conservative as humanly possible on all of these platforms because, you know, I don't want to get shut down. I have a quite a nice little business going with our supplement company that I don't really want Stripe to suddenly turn around and go, we're not going to serve you anymore because that's a big pain in the ass. Um, I've got three different Stripe accounts for, <laughs> for, for that business as well as PayPal, and I have a backup um, uh, service as well, and I'm about to actually have a phone call with Barclay Card as well for a backup of the backup. So you can have, you know, it, basically I'm just covering my ass because I, I want to make sure that my business is sustainable. But as long as I follow the rules and follow the game of basically, you know, making sure you got the, those basic things right, don't make outlandish claims, don't put like pictures of like, you know half naked men or women on your on your you know with six packs rippling away and all that kind of stuff it's never going to get approved if you've got a testimonial on your landing page or anywhere on your website make sure that there is an uh, a disclaimer uh, that basically states that it's not typical results those are the things that and those 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 things are actually very clear in facebook and paypal and stripe and all these kind of things they they, they all all these different sites have essentially the same terms of use uh, requirements that you have these things on your site because they don't want to be you know strung up by the balls either. Yeah, exactly. I actually got a really great question here, so I'm going to display it. Go on. Yeah. Then we can we can explain ourselves. <gasps> right, this is Tom. Okay, I don't mean to be a fly in the ointment. No, you're not. We're happy to answer anything, Tom. Uh, but this is a place called Serious Markers Only. Why have you been, begun to focus on helping newbies? A year ago, uh, we were talking about building <laughs> you know, high six-figure blogs or creating seven-figure e-commerce businesses. Now you seem to be focusing on bootstrapping your first six months. Where are we going as a group? Right, Tom. <laughs> did you hit, did you hear the, the the first couple of about the first minute or the first thirty seconds? Where I said, although we're calling this what to do in your next six months, this can apply to any six months. Okay, it's all about focusing on what. So if you've got um, an e-commerce store, focus on just doing one thing a day for that e-commerce store, and it will grow over the next six months. So that's the general. Uh, reason we're doing, we're trying. 
But for a personal basis, I'm trying to get people just to take action one step at a time. Okay, small steps before, before learn to walk before people can run. Uh, I honestly cannot think of the last time we got a question from anybody who was struggling with a six figure business. I get lots of questions every day, PMs, emails, uh, in the Facebook groups uh, saying, I'm still struggling to get my first, earn my first bit of money. Okay, so what we're trying to do is bring stuff. So people who really are struggling, we're going to give them a framework where they can work on to actually build up their businesses. If they're established, they can still use the same framework, just further along. And obviously, Tim's got the um, e-commerce business, uh, or several e-commerce businesses, or several products in e-commerce stores, etc. So you can, he's, he's there to help. But we obviously, I've not had, I don't know if Tim's had any questions yet recently about it. Well, no, it's, it's, it's more about um, it's, uh, this whole process is about simplifying as well, it, making your, um, uh, your, your whole business run a much, much more lean as well. We kind of get buried, and I'm as guilty as the rest of, you know, as everybody else for having too many tools, having, you know, way too many like opt-in pages or may, way too many sales pages kicking about or, you know, and it's like, I'm, I've got all, you know, all these automations running and it's like, well, actually, what are they doing? Yeah. And it's like, simplify the whole process down to, okay, so let's get, let's, let's get the basics right. Do something consistently right every single day because, you know, you can do all of the other stuff. You can have something on Pinterest and Snapchat and Instagram and, you know, Facebook and Twitter and all these different platforms. But, you know, to be honest with you, every time I've tried to do that, where I've had, I've, cross-pollinated across so many different platforms i've ended up being so overwhelmed by the whole thing that i do none of them particularly well whereas if i concentrate on one or two of them at the very most that's when i tend to get the best results you know the stuff that i've you know refocused on this this last 12 months it's very much been about creating better engagement on facebook and like that's worked like gangbusters for us now, I do also run adverts on Google AdWords, for example, but I've actually outsourced that now to a third party company because I've, I'm letting somebody else handle that side of things because it's actually better for me to do that so I can concentrate on getting Facebook working as best I can, getting the engagement right for getting new people to discover our brands. And that's, that's really what that's, this is all about. It's about simplifying and, and, and having a, a simple process for getting people in and, and and selling that selling that one product, trying to rather than trying to sell twenty five different things. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've, I pointed out a week ago that I had that this, is, this is so embarrassing. Sixteen email sequences, twenty six forms, five products, and seven lead magnets. Um, I've now cleaned them out. I've got I think uh, five sequences, seven forms, two products, and three lead magnet re- lead magnets. It just makes my life easier. I haven't got all that all, all those automations working. Uh, another good question from Mary. Um, I love your start simple rule. Which order respond to another recurring commission products tools help you do that so a buyer can actually use the service or product? I would suggest, Mary, that whatever niche you're in. So, for example, if you're in the weight loss niche and there's a, pro- a product that you use and it's a monthly subscription, a membership, or whatever, promote that and just write articles about that. If you're in the supplement niche, promote lean greens. <laughs> actually actually this is quite funny because mark mark and i were doing some uh, uh research believe it or not the other day trying to find out what was the number one uh affiliate product on clickbank at the moment and it's actually a di- with, recurring incomes. with recurring incomes and it is actually a direct <laughs> direct competitor for for our lean green signature yeah. product um so i won't tell you what it is you can go and search for yourself because i'm I don't want to give them any more advertising than they need. Well, ask Drew's mum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, whatever you whatever you've got, whatever niche you're in, whatever you're using. So like, Tim uses uses click funnels. So he, he it's easy for him to promote click funnel, which has a recurring income. Plus, when someone gets stuck, like one of his affiliates phones up, or someone's bought through his link, goes, "Tim, I'm stuck." Like I do all the time. He, he, Tim's gonna go, "Yeah, this is this is what I would do. This is how you do it." Okay, so you, you've always got people have always got that little fallback to I bought something through you, um, 
it's not what I've got a problem. Can you help me? And no, nobody in their right mind is going to say no. <laughs> See, I'm no. quite happy to help people if they've purchased through my affiliate link yeah. for, for ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels rewards us very, very well for like, you know, referring people to them. Love or hate Russell Brunson, you know, f- you know, the ClickFunnels <laughs> product <laughs> is, is, is an awesome product. Um, but it does confuse people like Mark on a regular basis, like Mark. Um, <laughs> so it, it's it's kind of, you know, I'm quite more than happy to actually help somebody out because, you know, essentially I'm getting paid for, you know, recommending that product. You know, I should do more of it. I should promote <laughs> ClickFunnels a bit more. But, you know, it's, it's a matter of balancing out the time and what I'm actually interested in promoting. But, yeah, it's, you know, pick something like that. Pick, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a SaaS tool. It can be a, a physical product as well. There's plenty of recurring billing products out there, no matter whether it's on the supplement side of things, whether it's on the SaaS side of things, whether it's magazines or whether it's membership sites that you, 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 you're enthusiastic about. Obviously, SMO, for example, is a is a great example of that. You know, serious markets only. We actually reward affiliate uh, recurring affiliate commissions on that. So, you know, if you if you love us, promote us, and you get a recurring commission off of it. <laughs> so, so Still two, and you're in for free. Yeah, you get you get us for free. My God. Oh my God. <laughs> so, I mean, that that is basically what we wanted to talk about. Um, I've actually done a two-minute guide to building your online business okay and it is literally a two-minute read okay because one of the one of the theories i'm going off is nobody wants to look at a long course nobody wants to look at a 40 page report if they can just get the basics bare bone stuff in three or four pages so if on you comment below and type in report you should start getting some messages from me because we use the many chat um, and yes, type in re- report below. Oh, hang on, let me show this. Oh, hang on, wait. There you go, type in report. And um, what will happen is you should get a message from me, confirm it, then you get you can click on it and you'll get sent to the report or you opt in for the report. Simple, straightforward. Um, yeah, and you, it is literally a two minute read, but it's something you can pin up, put on your wall and just look look down and go, it'll give you a bit of framework and a, an idea of where we're going and what, what our views are on basically building your business. I suppose, you know, the, the final thing I'll say, just to allay Tom's sort of fears that we're, we're going back to the, you know, the, the beginners. It's like, I, you know, I don't believe that's necessarily the case. The, the you know, I, th- I think, um, you know, uh, you have access to us on SMO to ask us questions uh, you know, about, you know, whether it's it quite advanced questions about, uh, you know, different things that you can do within your own business. And as, I suppose that's the, the benefit of having access to both myself and Mark, who've, you know, t- between us, we've probably got two decades worth of experience on, you know, whether it's selling, selling physical products, whether it's selling, you know, information products, membership sites, e-commerce, you know, it's B2C. events. The B two C, B two B, the whole the whole lot, you know. So yeah, that's what we're there for. So if you're an SMO, get your questions in there. And we'll try and try and cover them as best we can. I've I've held events in Vegas, Nottingham, Marbella. I mean, if, any, if anyone's running an event, just ask. Yeah. If we don't if we don't know the answer to a question, we know somebody who does know the answer. So always never be afraid of answering. Even even if you want to be a little bit vague about your niche, which I'm. I'm <laughs> So I've just seen Tom's message. We've got access to you. Uh, no, I, I say this. There's, there's some stuff that I don't know about Tom, and I'd, I'd really like to know more about what he, what his, what his core business is and how he, how he does what he does. So, you know, tell us more. Yeah. yeah. Tom, if you want, you can come on a call. That sounds like a plan. We'll get him on for a hot seat. Yeah. Or, or you can do, we can do, we can do um, a chat show style thing so we can get lots of people on. Oh, look at all these people saying report. I wonder if it worked. <laughs> Is this like the thing that I did, you did yesterday that didn't work for me? <laughs> have, you seen what, have you seen Peter's post? Simple no. marketing only. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm scared to say things when I know Peter's there because I know he's going to shoot me down later on. <laughs> oh, and by the way, Peter, I remember Nano 212. That was awesome. 
Um, one, one last thing, anybody got any other questions, stick them up right now. We'll try our best to answer them in the next 30 seconds or we'll uh, answer them in the comments uh, after this. What okay. we're going to be doing... Okay. Mary. Mary always gets to the heart of the matter. Uh, so what Tim is saying is simplifying. I know Mary always simplifies everything that all of us says yeah. down to like two things. Uh, what, what Tim is saying, Simplify provokes my questions about which tools are actually supporting those efforts and providing the flexibility needed to complete today. Yeah, exactly. And really, well, maybe we could have just, you know, put Mary's post up for today's whole yeah, I mean, presentation. The, the, the actual tools that we're using now ourselves are way less than we were using, I would say, even three months ago. Yeah. I was, I was saying I've now up to... Well, if I ditch ClickFunnels and ruin Tim's week, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm then going to be over six six thousand dollars. I would say just from going through. It, don't need it. Don't use it. I can I can do the same with the, the that landing page that you saw with when you typed in report was exactly what came as the bog standard of the bigger builder. I just clicked the button, changed the text. It took me thirty seconds to set up. What have we got? What else we got? Stuart. Yeah. Just been posting, mentioned a few good things this week. Uh, it does sometimes take a while to realize what fires you up. Do you know what? Actually, I should actually read these before I post them. Yeah. One day that's going to catch us out. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been last week and been concentrating on e commerce store since and launching Monday. Best focus concentration done, just getting it done and out there. Even if it's not perfect, I can tweak as I go. Let me, into, let, let, me let you into a secret. Even if you think it's not perfect, nobody will notice. And if, if they do notice, they send you an email saying, oops, I've done something wrong. This isn't working. Not that, oh, you screwed up. It's, oops, I've done something wrong. That's not working. Can you fix it? Cool. Can you tell me how I can get your product? I can show you hundreds of emails where I've messed up and people said, oops, I've done it wrong. They think that they've done it wrong. I say, so, I, me, well, I'm out there. I, I messed up a complete promotion at the beginning of the week, but it was still successful because... It's like it was it was a bit sort of uh, rough around the edges and did everything in completely the wrong wrong order, but I pressed send on it. You know, I I, I pulled the trigger on it as soon as I could because otherwise you're just gonna sit there waiting for perfection. One best one piece of advice when launching stores besides learning is how to spell peace. <laughs> <laughs> what was what's the one piece of advice you'd give? <laughs> oh dear. Uh, I'm actually interested again. It's like you know, uh, you don't need to give away the exact sort of uh, you know niche that you're in, Stuart. But again, it's like you know, let us know what uh, what what's the store doing. You know, rough rough niche. You don't need to go real deep and tell us, give us away all your secrets and all that kind of stuff. I'm always interested in understanding what people are starting as far as e-commerce stores. Um, you know, whether it's a supplement niche or whether it's the you know uh, you know uh, whether it's you know, kitchenware or whether it's apparel or whatever, always useful and interesting stuff to understand what our audience is actually um, actually selling. Um, just yoga, helps us. Yoga pants are a good niche, niche. What's that? Yoga pants, mate. Great niche. Yoga pants, yeah. You can buy them for cents in, in, in China. <laughs> are, are you going to be the photographer? No. Nope. Actually, no, I'll be the model. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear. Yeah, so anyway, that's, that's just a hor horrid thought. <laughs> so anyway, you having mis completely misread um, what Stuart was saying, what's the one big bit of advice you would give for someone start starting a store? Apart from <laughs> um, yeah, uh, focus on uh, really one or two products to start with because it's like it's way too easy to add like a thousand SKUs to your site if you're Basically, if you're drop shipping, um, you know, concentrate on one or two of them. Get some great copy uh, written. You know, get some uh, great engagement on your Facebook page to start driving people through to those products. Um, get your offer right. Get your offer right. Yeah, always comes back to the offer. God, dear, I hate yeah. it when Peter's right. I know he's still here as well, isn't he? Can't stand things. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, concentrate one or two products, really focus on getting those um getting those moving. Um, you know, it's one thing that we did get right with with Lean Green certainly is that 
you know, we had we literally had the one one product for the best part of three and a half, four years. Um, and it was one of the best things we ever did. It took a while to get the traction, but once we did, it was like, yeah, we knew that one product inside out. Our customers knew us for that one product. Um, and we, we created a very solid business for that. And then we expanded from there. Yeah. So any more questions, guys? I'll just have a quick scan in case we missed any. How's um, New Orleans tomorrow, if you're still there? Or New Orleans, I should say. Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah. I don't think I've missed any. Cool. Any other questions, chuck them below this video. Um, yeah. All the videos going forward, I believe Mark is going to put them onto the Lifestyle Marketer Facebook page. Um, I think it does get cropped across to other places eventually. Yeah. Um, so be going yeah, forward. That's what we're doing. Um, so I've just seen Mary's yeah. first part, part of a comment. You, yeah, you read it out. <laughs> I figure we're all beginners, restarting our lives daily, monthly, yearly. Remember the seven-figure marketers, marketers who disappeared into the void. They bragged about being advanced until their buyers became critics and technology dropped them from the radar. Absolutely. It's like, you know, some of the, some of the best businesses that I've got involved with have been so, so simple. Like, just ridiculous and boring. I th you know, boring as in, in the sense of you end up talking about the same thing over and over and over again and doing the same thing over and over and over again, but they end up being the most successful. And as long as you can be, remain enthusiastic about having a boring business, <laughs> it's like, away you go. Knock I yourself mean, out. The great thing I like about boring, simple funnel with a landing page or a post and then a link is there's so little to go wrong. And when something does go wrong, you start leaking traffic. You know where the leak is immediately. If you've got one of these amazing funnels with stuff going everywhere that looks like some sort of thing um, Blofeld would create, you're never going to find where your traffic leaks are, where your problems are, uh, what's not working. Keep it simple. You can see it's all laid out in front of you. When you wake up in the morning, as I said before, you wake up in the morning, you sit at your desk and go, I've got to write a blog post today, or I've got to write a new report. You're not thinking, well, I've got to do this, and then I've got to do this, and I've got to do this, and I've got to do this. There was a comment came up about how would you promote a boring business? Do you want to find that one? Just make sure I've got the full. Uh... How far down was it? No, let me go. Let me go. Oh, yeah. Just... Stop, stop it. How would you recommend promoting a boring business like wheel writing? It's not boring. That's oh. the thing. It's like boring business. What I mean by boring business is not necessarily the thing that you're selling is boring. It's the process of actually selling the same thing over and over and over again, which may be deemed to be boring um you know selling the, the same single product for three and a half four years talking yeah. about the same thing i'm still enthusiastic and you should well you know will writing you can be enthusiastic about the benefits and the outcomes and the solutions uh, the problems that it solves um, yeah, I mean, I, i'd focus on the problems so i would identify i mean i don't think probably a week goes past where you can't find a, a news story that would have had a much better ending if the person involved in had a will. I mean, you, you, there was a, um, I was listening to Radio 4, um, and there was a thing about <laughs> power of attorney the other day and how much trouble a power of attorney can be. If people had a will and or whatever is in place, um, yeah, definitely. I mean, just, get, just find your angle and just continue working out that angle and refining that angle. Um, here we go. Interesting thread with Peter S yesterday. Yeah, it was actually. Uh, recommending post a phone call, forget down any report, though I'm wondering about not getting them on the list. Oh, Peter's going to come after you. Oh. I mean, there, there are things like, um, there's the things like uh, click to call and call pages that you can set up. Um, uh, uh, it's, it's called Blab, something book like a boss. There's, there's stuff like that you can set up. They will all they will all grab people. Anyway, um, I mean you will convert. Definitely this way. If you're if you grab a hundred email addresses, 
you may convert one or two. If you grab 100 phone calls or even 10 phone calls, you'll probably convert three or four. Um, the conversion rate on talking to someone, because you know your business, you're genuine about your business, um, it will be much higher. So why, why worry about too much about a list? I mean, you'll get your buyers on the list. So next time you've got another property come up, you can just email the people already involved who have had a good, a good experience and get them back on. I think we should like redefine today what a list actually is because yes email list for has been prevalent for like the last 10 years but ultimately a list could be somebody who's in a pixeled audience on facebook that you can then you know put a post and a uh and, and a, you know a very low cost advert in front of those people you know, a list could be people who are who've spoken to your messenger who have you know through through many chats uh, you know, it's a, a, a list could be people who've clicked on one of those weird things on the top of your website to say that you want to get push notifications. That's a list. People who become, you know, who who uh, call you and there's the call tracking and all that kind of stuff. They're on a list. So, uh, you know, we define what a list is. Mix Mac. Was it Mix Mac? Mix Mac. Mac Mix. Mix Mac. Mix Mac. Whatever. There's a, there's a nightclub here called Mix Mac. So it's, easy to get it's the worst place you ever want to, You only ever go there at three o'clock in the morning when you can't stand up. <laughs> if they had carpet scene, we have a very sticky carpet. It's, it's one of those horrible, horrible places where nothing else is open. We go, well, come on, we've got to go to Mic Max now. Um, so, uh, Mark, if you can see the message on the screen there from Mary. Uh, Mark, I just bought that service based on needs and a personal story. The experience was a great relief, uh, not a great bore. So there you go. A, that, that's a, quote, a quotation that you build a whole story around. It was a great relief. I say that's, you know, you can, you know, there's no reason why you can't make will writing actually an exciting and interesting process for people. Ex exciting as in what legacy that you are leaving behind, you know, your, your family and your loved ones. You know, that's, that's got to be exciting to people. And, and don't be like me. I've got a will. But I can't remember who I, who I put it with when I was in England. <laughs> Um, some lawyer in England's got my will, and I've got no idea who it was. <laughs> so there you go. Cool. I think that's right. us. Yeah, that, that, that's it for the day. We've, we've bored them enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, as you sorry, one final thing, as you were saying about a list can be anything. Some of you may have well seen yesterday, I just went into ManyJack, and the old list of contacts we had from when we were doing MOE, and we are testing some stuff out then, I just sent a message about the call today. And that's a list. Guys, thank you very much. Enjoy your holidays. I know several of you on your holidays. Um, someone was in Edinburgh last week at the Comedy Festival. So I said, whenever, if ever you guys are in Edinburgh or southern Spain, just give us a call. And we'll come and meet you for a coffee. Yep, absolutely. Tim will meet you for a coffee. <laughs> I like you for the old cheap nasty wine. <laughs> uh, did, how much? How much wine did you drink for thirty euros? Uh, well, it was three bottles, <laughs> <laughs> and that was good quality wine, by the way. <laughs> I think I can't remember much about it. <laughs> right, that's enough about my drinking habits again. Right, guys, right. same time next week. Um, if you have anything you want us to talk about. Let us know, or next week we'll go back to the, set, the um, usual six. Um, there you go, Tim. One for you. Um, normally, the six, six, five or six topics that we'll, ju we'll just do a few minutes on. Uh, but please, just tell us what you want to talk about. We're here to talk about and help people as much as we can. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Speak to you later. Bye.